I'm laughing because there's so many videos on YouTube about e-bike accessories. And there's always links below where you can buy it. Buy this, buy that, follow my link. I don't get a commission, but it helps me with the channel, blah, blah, blah. This is not that kind of video, okay? I'm just gonna show you the accessories I have and why I got them and who I think they're for. And you can make your own decision and you can decide where you wanna get it and I will give some suggestions. But no, I don't care about a 50 cent commission or a dollar commission or whatever it is, okay? This is all for you because I've done the research, I've done, have some experience with e-bikes and bikes in general and other rideables and I just wanna share with you and that's it, okay? Let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is going to be the lock, okay? And don't kid yourself, the lock isn't going to be the number one thing that prevents theft. It's going to be where you park it, okay? It will be where you park it, not the lock. Because if you've done enough research, you'll know that every lock, except for the hip, hip lock D1000, can be cut in a matter of seconds, okay? Literally seconds. So whether you're spending 30 bucks or... 100 bucks or 200 bucks, the lock can be broken with the same tool, a grinder, okay, in a matter of seconds. So it's going to be a matter of where you park it. And to be honest with you, a lot of it is going to be a more of like your own sense of comfort, okay? The real way, again, number one is to park your bike in a place that is going to be visible by other people and that you're not parking in the same place every time, all the time, day after day, where it's very predictable, okay? We'll probably go in a video, a separate video, where we have more detail about that. But if you're really worried about the bike, then you may want to insure it. And again, pay attention to where you're parking it, all right? So I will go over the locks that I have and why I got those locks. Okay, the main lock I have is this. And it's called the Hip Lock Gold Rated Chain Lock, okay? So the main reason why I got this is because it goes on your hip. All right, so when you're not using it, which is going to be majority of the time, because you're riding right, it goes around my hip like a belt. And so maybe I'll do a review on it later, but people say, oh, once it goes on your waist, then the weight disappears. Not true, okay? <laughs> you do feel the weight, but after, I would say, 100 miles, okay, let's just say 100 miles, then you will not feel it nearly as much. And there are times where I forget that I'm wearing it, okay? So it's, it, it's true that once it's on your, on your waist and you get used to it, that it's not that big of a deal. And it has the feature of it being reflective so that when you're wearing it at night, then cars shine their lights on it and it's reflective and it's extra feature. More of a gimmick, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, but it does have a built-in lock here, and then it's a 12 millimeter diameter uh, chain. And so, again, the convenience of having it, of being mounted on me rather than on the bike itself and it being gold rated, okay? So there's bronze, silver, gold, and diamond, okay? There's a third party company that um, rates all these things from different companies, okay? And so I wanted to get the gold one. I felt the diamond one was okay, but this, the price difference between a gold one and a diamond one is significantly different. And um, so I just felt like this was just better value. Yes, I have a second lock. The reason I have a second lock is this lock here made by Master Lock. It's called Master Lock Street Cuffs. Okay, I've had this for 14 years because it's been on this bike that is well over 14 years. And I have a little mount there. And in this case, I mounted here. The reason I use this as a secondary lock is number one is my seat still has a quick release and I live in a major city. And so I wanna be able to lock the seat and my helmet, okay? The helmet I got does, actually we'll just show you over here. The helmet I have is called the Burn Hudson. And this hole right here is designed to put either a D-lock, U-lock, or something like this through it. So I can actually lock my bike seat and my helmet either to the bike or to a pole or whatever. And so that's the reason I have that. I don't necessarily like carrying my helmet or wearing it around wherever I'm going. And so that helps that out with that. So why did I get it? Number one, it's a name brand. Number two, I just thought it was cool. I mean, it looks like handcuffs. How cool, how much cooler can you get than that? <laughs> and actually the reviews on this was fairly good. Um, I didn't see any of those reviews until after like a decade later, because back then YouTube wasn't really that not nearly as popular, especially for reviewing products. And this thing wasn't really all that popular necessarily, but I've got a lot of compliments on it, just the way it looks, but it's also very useful, at least the way I use it. All right, the second accessory is going to be a 
phone mount. Okay, how this works is that it's very stealthy and you don't really know what it is when it's on the bike and not being used, but these flaps open and then it stretches out and then you put your phone right in there, okay? And it does not slide out and it's fairly secure. I got this from AliExpress for about, I think, 12 or $17. It was kind of expensive for what I wanted to spend and what it was, but I like the kind of stealthy quality and it's a pretty simple look. The other cell phone mount I really like is this one, okay? I know, you, you think you've seen this. You've seen them everywhere. All the cell phone mounts look the same. Okay, there's one feature on this that I highly, highly recommend, and this has to do with how this mechanism locks so that it doesn't expand when your phone is in here. And that has to do with the back, okay? The back looks like this. Once your phone is mounted, you're gonna push this switch and it makes us that this is completely locked and it doesn't come undone. And the gears in here that extend this and make it come down are metal, all right? So it's, a, it's metal gears in here, so it's fairly good quality. And the fact that this nub thing is so big, when you're wearing gloves and you're trying to do that, it's so much easier than trying to navigate turning a dial several times. Okay, so just lock, unlock, and that's it. Another reason why I like this particular style is because it is very rigid. It is not going anywhere. I don't necessarily like the ones that um, have the rubber bands that go around each corner of the phone because I feel it's going to be wobbly or it's going to fall or if the bike falls, okay, sometimes the bike will fall, then these edges protect your phone. Okay, I know that's not as likely to happen, but if that were to happen, then it's so much easier. And then if your phone I don't know, I just live in a big city, so I'm always kind of paranoid by this stuff. But if someone's near you and they're close to you and they're actually trying to just snatch your phone and run away, they're not gonna be able to do this if your phone is in here because there's the little button in the back and they're not really gonna be familiar with that generally to be able to snatch it. Whereas if you had the rubber band kind, people can just rip that off very easily. And what I also like about this is it does not require any sort of special phone case. There's ones I know on the market where you put a special thing on the back that's proprietary and then it snaps in place and it leaves your handlebar clean. You don't have this big clunky thing, but I don't know about you guys, but I use my phone more often off the bike than when I'm riding, okay? So I don't really care that it is like that. <laughs> I'd much rather have the phone case that I want and have a uh, holder here that is not specific to the phone or the case itself. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna talk about is not this, that's gonna be in a separate video, but it's gonna be the bell, okay? This bell, I got for about $2.50 from AliExpress. Okay, I like that it has a clean look to it. It doesn't really look like a bell, it just has these two metal pieces and like all bells, you just kind of do that, okay? We're gonna compare that to the bell that I got for this bike and this is more of a traditional looking bell, okay? And this bell, the sound is actually pretty good. I know that may be hard to translate through the phone and the camera and the monitor here, but this bell, the ringing lasts a bit longer. It's a little bit more crisp. And uh, this also was from AliExpress and that was for about $8 or so. I know some of you are like, I don't need a bell. I need an alarm. Yes, that's the next thing <laughs> we're talking about alarm. And there are electric horns, but I find that's kind of in the middle ground. The electric horns generally aren't gonna be loud enough for cars to hear with some exceptions. Um, the one that Juiced has and that I think electric offers is loud enough for cars to hear, but a lot of the cheaper electronic ones, cars aren't able to hear, and it's sort of obnoxious when you're using it for pedestrians, okay? So I would use that bell, that type of mechanical bell for pedestrians or for other bikers, just kind of a friendly warning that you're here um, with an excuse me or on your left <laughs> aside and have some respect that way. Otherwise, a much larger, a much louder horn for pedestrians. And for that, I would recommend, without a doubt, however, there's some drawbacks on, with it, and that's why I haven't installed it, is going to be an air horn, okay? There's a company called Air Zound, okay? Like Air Sound, but with a Z, Air Zound, and they run just shy of $30, and it's literally a tank that is the size of a disposable water bottle, and then it has a bell, or not a bell, but a button with a horn on it. Okay, and so you just pump air into the canister like you would pump your tires. So it comes with a Schrader valve and then 
that thing is loud, <laughs> like super loud. And it, it'll last you all day or maybe even all week before you have to refill it with, with more air from a regular pump. Um, that I used to have on a recumbent trike. Uh, not this one, but one that I sold recently, so I can't show it to you, but it's called Air Zound. It's ugly looking, okay? <laughs> it's not gonna make your bike look pretty, but it will definitely get attention. And it's not just a loud one sound beep. As long as you're holding the button, that thing will continue to make noise. And I had that thing for, I think, 11 years, and cars can definitely hear you. So I am a fan of AliExpress. So when I saw this electric alarm for $199, I had to give it a try. And I know two seconds ago I said, don't do electric alarms because they're obnoxious for pedestrians and cars can't hear you. But this was, this is the reason why I feel that way, <laughs> okay? So I got this and since I have it, I put it on here, but I don't necessarily use it. Uh, we're gonna just kind of press the button here. So you can hold that down and it makes kind of a sharp piercing noise. Um, $199 from AliExpress, they go up to like $5.99. $199 was just a special price. Um, they still have that every now and then, but for $199, Maybe you want to pick it up anyway, uh, just to try it out for yourself. But that's what that is. Okay, so some of you are looking at my analog clock and you're wondering why I have a clock on my bike. And is that just for decoration or what? Well, my phone normally is mounted on here, right? And my screen's typically off. And so rather than touching the phone and turning it on and seeing what time it is, I can just look over here. And believe it or not, <laughs> with an analog clock, I know these days people don't really say like quarter past five or, you know, 10 to three, but you do get a, at least for me, I get a much better sense of the half hour, the full hour, quarter hour, like how much time I have relative to the next full hour or if I need to be at a certain place by a certain time. So this helps me a lot. And then this was $8 from AliExpress and it does run on a button battery. You basically, remove it using this set screw and then the whole thing with with the set screw and then you're going to push this um clock part out and then behind there is a tab and then you can change the battery but surprisingly when i got this from aliexpress from china it actually came with us pacific coast time which i found kind of cool and i do have ordered another one of these for my electric bike that's coming soon. And that is what is in this guy, or in here. So this is how it looks like when it's new from the box. Okay, I'm on a budget just like you guys are. I suspect you guys are. So all my bikes have rigid forks, meaning no suspension, okay? So one way around that and still kind of get some comfort is to have a suspension seat post. And I haven't tried a lot of them, but I have tried the Zoom one and a Zoom knockoff, okay? So the knockoff one does not work very well. That was from AliExpress for just like $3 cheaper than the Zoom one that you get from Amazon. So I recommend you just go on Amazon and you buy the Zoom branded suspension seat post and that will do you just fine. Just make sure that you get the diameter that is correct for your particular bike seat post. One thing to be aware about, aware of, for these suspension seat posts is that you have this much less space for the seat post to go down, okay? So if you barely fit the bike as far as height as it's concerned, or you share the bike with a spouse or partner or friend that is shorter than you, then you're not gonna be able to move this, you're no longer gonna be able to move the seat post down further than just an inch here, okay? Whereas before the suspension seat post, I would have had this entire length. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're buying a suspension seat post. Yes, there are options from other brands and other styles that exceed $150, which is not in my budget, especially when I'm in the city and I don't want to have to worry about one other thing. I do generally lock the seat, but if people are going to see something that's all fancy, that's $150 off my bike, there are chances that they're going to want to try to take it and be able to get that. So I just wanted something that was kind of cheap and doable and simple and not doesn't stand out too much and that works for me. I know a lot of people upgrade their seats and honestly I think it's because people aren't used to riding bikes. <laughs> so as I said earlier a lot of people who are buying e-bikes are new to cycling so they're just not used to it. So when they're getting on the bike and the seat is hard, the seat is supposed to be hard, it's a bike seat. So you know each to their own but yes you can get a Cloud9 
fat seat and it might be com more comfortable for you and maybe it's good for you and you don't see any reason not to get it. For me, I, I like this particular one um, because it comes with the handle that's built in. And I do have one kid that sits here on occasion fairly regularly and they use it as a handle. So I could fabricate another handle or figure something else out, but I do f like the seat for its simplicity and for what I use it for. This seat, the stock one is quite firm. Okay, so I did get this wraparound thing and you can get this from AliExpress, something similar for probably under $10. And so it does have kind of a gel uh, material inside that is softer. So it's definitely more comfortable than this, but because of the utility of the handle, I've stuck with um, the Juiced branded stock seat. All right, next is going to be the basket. So I don't want to get too elaborate on it because the video would be too long, but there are many advantages of having stuff stored in the basket as opposed to on the back or on a backpack that you're riding with. When you're riding with the backpack, number one is it gets all sweaty and just the center of gravity isn't as good and it's gonna feel heavier. When you have it on the front, you're not gonna feel it as much as when your load like groceries or whatever is on your back. Um, the advantage of having it up there, as goofy as it looks and as silly as it looks and as immature as it looks like your little kid riding a bike with you know, a little basket in the front. When you have it in the rear, well in my case, uh, I can't really do that because I do have an occupant who sits here, but when you have stuff stored on the back, number one is people can take it when you're at a stop and you wouldn't know. And number two is as you're pushing, pulling your leg over, you're going to not have that much clearance. So by having your load here, you're, you, know, you have a lot more height that you can put stuff in there versus here, especially if the bike isn't a step through, then you're going to have to swing your leg over and then they're just a lot more space to be able to swing your leg over if you don't have all your load there and you mount it to the front. I should note one disadvantage of having it up in the front is generally the load, not generally, all the time, the load in the front, the capacity, the limit is going to be a lot less than on the rear. The rear because the racks are rated for more and it's on directly on the frame and it's at this angle as opposed to cantilevering off just the head tube. Um, the rating on the front basket is never gonna be as much as the back. So it really depends on what you're looking for and what you're expecting to hold in your storage. Next is a bike pump. So an electric bike pump is kind of the new thing. I feel that is required when you have a fat tire e-bike because if you use a standard pump for a fat tire e-bike, if you're anything like me, you're gonna be sweating a lot even doing this in the convenience of your home. So if you have a bike pump such as this one or that one, it's gonna take forever to pump something like that and it's gonna be a lot of work. So for about $25 shipped to my house, I got one of these guys. There are a ton of them available on AliExpress. I picked this one in particular because the tube here that screws in the top is built into the case. Okay, a lot of them, you're gonna have accessories separate from it, and it's just a lot of stuff to be mumbling around with. So I like having stuff compact and all kind of together, and it has its own space. And it's not that big. I mean, I could do without carrying it, but um, in the case that I do need to pump that thing, I would rather have this, and I'm okay carrying this around. Oh, one more thing to be aware of about this, okay? When you're ordering an electric bike pump, make sure that it has a battery in it. I know that seems obvious, but some of these will only operate if it's hooked up by a cable to a cigarette lighter adapter inside the car. And so obviously if you're on your bike, you're not gonna have a cigarette lighter adapter to plug into. So don't make the mistake I did and buy the one that has to plug in the cigarette light lighter adapter, which I ended up keeping in this car for emergencies. And I bought a second one for this bike purpose. And that is this guy here. And look at that. It even has a self turning off feature. And for those of you that care, this is the particular one I got. It looks like it's made by Car Sun. And again, I like it because it has the tube that is built into and contained inside the unit itself. In a big city where anything can happen, you might want some pepper spray. <laughs> this one is made by Saber. 
which I guess is a common brand. We have a few of these in the car and I do carry this with me sometimes while I'm riding. When you're riding, it may get cold. So I have gloves and I just, a lot, a lot of it is a comfort thing. I just feel a lot better having it. Um, it doesn't provide super amount of warmth, um, but I do like the maneuverability of it. Anything too thick, I, can, I feel like I'm wearing motorcycle gloves or ski gloves, and that's just not how I wanna feel while I'm riding my bike. So I do have this one, it's made by InBike, and um, this is size large. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna help you, but you do wanna get a size a little bit, especially if you're in the US, to get a size a little bit bigger than you normally would, just cause those uh, Chinese sizes are gonna be one size smaller than you would if you're getting in America. Um, I do like that it has these little raised areas to kind of keep um, from getting blisters or anything as you're holding the bike handle for long periods of time. Um, these two fingers do allow for you to touch touch screens on your phone. So that's, that's helpful. The last pair of gloves I had did not have that feature, if you will. And I'd take off my gloves and swipe the phone, all that, which may not seem like a big deal, but it is a nice convenience. This in-bike pair of gloves was $13 plus tax shipped. Um, again, this is from AliExpress. You may have noticed a lot of the stuff I buy is from AliExpress just because there's a lot of good deals out there for gloves and for other accessories. For those of you who care about like matching and stuff like that, I kind of made the mistake of getting a pair of gloves that matched my bike because that's the only bike I had. Little did I know I would be getting another bike that's a different color. So I went with the gray pair over there that I just showed you because um, that way I can use this for this bike and any other bike. Not that I can't use it with this bike, um, but yeah, for those of you who care about appearances and all that kind of stuff. I do not know what kind of bike you have, so I will assume that you may not have these type of handlebars. And it has this rest pad on here, so you can put your hand on here as you're cruising. And it may not seem like it makes that big of a difference, but it makes a huge difference. I pretty much built this bike. Everything on this handlebar is brand new, um, from the gear shift to the throttle to this, everything. And so I did pick these because I wanted the same kind of feeling as I had on this retail bike, which is uh, the Juiced Rip Racer. And these are on AliExpress run, I think, 10 bucks also. So they're not gonna be very expensive. One secret that I'm gonna share with you is that to remove this, okay, is gonna be, you're gonna hate life after trying to remove this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some isopropyl alcohol. Yes, isopropyl alcohol, and you're gonna find a way to get it in there, okay? And if you're lucky enough, your stock um, handlebar grips or ends will have either a hole like this or maybe have an end cap. And you're just going to pour a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in there so that it gets between the inside of the rubber and the outside of the metal tube of the handlebar. And it will slip out very easily. I wish I learned about that before uh, I started modifying um, my college bike over there and my trike over there that would have been very very helpful to know that that tip about isopropyl alcohol being a lubricant to remove handlebar grips i would highly recommend a dedicated keychain for your bikes okay or your bike so let's go through it i have this key is for my hitch for my wife's car for the bikes this is for the hip lock this guy here is for the street cuffs, which is this guy here. And then I have an alarm on here. So this you can buy for anywhere from 12 to $17. This I wouldn't bother buying from AliExpress because the pricing is very similar on Amazon and you can get it in two days rather than two weeks. So I was able to pair it, um, pair a single remote with two devices. So I'm gonna press this button and both of them are gonna arm at the same time. All right, so now they're both armed, and when you start touching this, then you're gonna hear a beep, and if you keep touching it, it's gonna start making an even louder sound. But, and then it can disarm by pressing this second button. And again, they both disarm. So this is great for when I'm riding with a friend or my wife or whoever, and we both have the bikes out. Um, when I only have one bike out, usually when I'm arming, I'm well away from the other one, so it's not gonna arm that while I'm away. Uh, another thing I found was a customer of mine had this guy, and this is 
a remote control for your garage door. So what's great is that it has up to four garages for friends or in-laws or parents or whatever, and it has this cover so that you don't press it by mistake. And then it's very slim and uh, fits on the keychain. One thing to be aware of though, is you do wanna check with your garage door opener, uh, garage door motor brand, because they're not all gonna be compatible. Okay, you're gonna look up your megahertz. Okay, so look up the motor of your garage door opener, or garage door motor rather, and then see what megahertz it is, and make sure that the remote is compatible. I found that the ones from AliExpress was 433 megahertz, which is not compatible with the particular garage door I have. So I would have waited two weeks to save 10 bucks or eight bucks or whatever, and then it would not have worked. So I did get this from Amazon for I think $12. I could have gotten two for I think 18 was the deal. So that's what this guy is. And that is all I have on this keychain. Oh, this one other one is for a U-lock, which I generally don't use, but if for some reason I need a third lock for this setup, then um, I do have a U-lock up there that I can use, but that's what that guy is. All right, I wanna give you guys a warning about rear racks, okay? Because before buying this particular uh, rack for my daughter or son to sit on, I was looking at various different kind of racks, and on Amazon I did see ones that mount directly to the post, and they were rated at like over 100 pounds, which is not true, okay? If you look at some of the sellers and you look at their fine print, you'll find that the rating is for when the bike is at a standstill. Who needs a bike rack when the bike is at a standstill? <laughs> Nobody, okay? So when you're riding around town and there's bumping and movement, it's gonna add additional stress beyond the weight of the person or whoever is on the rack. And so that can be exponential, okay? So when you're reading 130 pounds or whatever that that rack is rated for and it mounts directly to this guy, and then it may have some stays that go on the, um, the frame. It's not really rated 130 pounds, okay? So don't kid yourself. Get something that is gonna be mounted directly to the frame. Uh, some bikes have stuff that is actually welded in, like some of the, like all the cargo bikes, well, majority of the cargo bikes these days that have high capacity loads, load ratings, are gonna be all one piece, okay? So this black part would be welded into the frame itself as opposed to being an add-on, okay? But again, I only bring this up because I don't want you misled into buying the stem mounted ones and seeing a 130 pound weight limit and then putting your kid on the back and your kid falls off and you know, that's never a good thing. All right, some of you may have noticed these guys and these are motorcycle foot pegs that I mounted to, or using the bolt that mounts the rack to the frame. I just got a longer one and put these folding pegs on. That way when my kid is sitting on top, they have a place to put their feet and they're not putting it in here or here, which is very uncomfortable. And it, and by having it out here, it makes it so that their feet or toes are less likely to get into the spokes. So this has been very, very helpful. Um, and, that, and they're a lot less dinky. I did find ones from AliExpress for cheaper. I think these were actually like less than $15. But I did find some from AliExpress that were of a lot thinner metal that didn't look very substantial. So these ones have done very well and work really well for what we use it for. All right, water bottle cages, okay? So standard water bottle cage, and this thing is actually a storage bin. So it's made by a company called Cage Rocket. And if, as you saw, it fits in the, the water bottle cage. And in here, I just have tools. So there's tools for Allen wrenches, there's things to remove the tire, there's wrenches, and other kind of stuff, like tire patch kit, blah, blah, blah. So that fits in here, but of course that means that I cannot have a water bottle on this ride. I know some people put water bottles on their handlebar. I'm not a big fan of that, only because I'm worried it's gonna fly off and I just don't like too much clutter on the handlebars itself. For this particular setup, for the Juiced Rip Racer, this basket happens to have pre-drilled holes that I use to mount adjustable water bottle cages. And that was able to fit on both sides. And because the basket is mounted to the frame, uh, when the handlebars move, there's no movement of this, so I don't have to worry about it jamming into the frame itself. And this does clear my knee when I'm cycling. But one thing just to, when you're getting water bottle cages, 
you want to get something, I would recommend something at least that is adjustable. Because again, a lot of, not a lot of us who ride e-bikes normally ride bikes. So it's not like we have, you know, electrolytes on one side and water on the other side and we're running around in, you know, roadie wear. So adjustable water bottle cage is great because a lot of us aren't necessarily going to be using water bottles. We might have, you know, reusable water bottles in here. Um, that is not necessarily the cycling kind, but the same bottle we use for work or whatever. And it's just nice to have something that's adjustable. Oh, and I did go cheap with these ones and I wish I didn't. The kind of water bottle uh, cage that you want that's adjustable has a dial here that you can just turn by hand and this whole thing scoots out. But I did not realize that the ones I got require an Allen key, okay? So you gotta take out your tool just to adjust this, which is a minor inconvenience, but it's an inconvenience nonetheless. And I do wish that if I were to go back, um, I got a water bottle cage that had something that I can turn by hand without pulling out a key. I will have a separate video on these turn signals, but these were $7.50 shipped for a pair with a remote. And I was able to figure out how to pair it with a second set so that there is both front turn signals and rear turn signals for under $15. So this changes the standby modes. Okay, so I'm gonna press that. And over here, you're gonna see standby mode can be red. It can be blinking orange or it can be off. Okay, so I, I like to have the blinking just to save on battery. But that's how that looks like at a distance and it is very visible even in the daytime in bright sunlight. And so how this works is that when you're on the bike, you're gonna press, say, the right turn signal, it's gonna beep and then it's gonna continue flashing and the other side's gonna turn off. And to cancel, you're gonna press the button again and that cancels and it goes back to whatever stock setup that you had. Another thing I like about these lights is that they are rechargeable via micro USB. So you do have to charge these every now and then. Um, I can't say exactly how many miles or how many minutes I've run it before I need to recharge. Um, but just be aware that you do need to recharge them and that can be kind of a benefit as opposed to replacing button batteries and things like that. So that's uh, a nice thing to have. The box that it comes in looks like this and it does have extra things in here. So it comes with the cable for charging, which is the micro USB, and it comes with these mounting rubber things. And that's how you mount the remote here. That's wireless. And then it has this bracket here, which actually you put behind your seat if you wanted to do that. In my case, I sometimes have a passenger behind my seat, so this would not really work for me. And they have these brackets. And this is the bracket that's used to secure the turn signal either on a bar like this or going under the back um, onto the rack. If you're in a hurry, Amazon does sell this kit for anywhere from I think 25 to, I think I've seen them for like $47. But on AliExpress, if you're willing to wait a couple weeks and willing to wait for a sale, they're like 680 plus tax and uh, you get everything you see here. So I do think it's worth the wait and I end up getting four of these. So I have uh, one set for this bike and I have another bike coming, which is the electric Expedition. And then uh, the set you see here is gonna go on that new bike. And I have another set for the back of that. It's been sitting in plain sight, but we haven't talked about this net. So this net is pretty generic. You can get this from AliExpress for I think $7. And on Amazon for probably a couple dollars more, they come in different colors. Yes, I was gonna get a yellow one, but the yellow was kind of a dark mustard yellow and it would kind of clash with that bright yellow. And then I also didn't want it to stand out too much and look like I was trying too hard. <laughs> so I kept with uh, just the black standard one. So this rear light is not operable in this situation, obviously because you can't see it with all this stuff here, but this has a really cool feature where my friend was riding this so the seat is a little bit lower but when it's higher this thing is a little bit higher up and out of this hole comes laser beams and shoots a line a red line across the floor okay or the ground only visible at night and you can have it solid red or blinking and it's very cool very visible at nighttime.
Uh, I don't do a lot of night riding. I uh, used to, but not anymore, but I've just kind of had this here. It's probably out of batteries, but I believe it runs on a couple AA batteries. And so that you can get from AliExpress or Amazon. AliExpress is probably like $10, $12 ish, and Amazon will probably be twice as much. Inevitably, someone's gonna ask me about this seat pad. So I just wanna mention, I got this for, I think $13 from Amazon. On AliExpress, it's about 10 bucks. I want it a little bit sooner than later, so I did go with Amazon, and also I was a little bit worried that it may not fit correctly, because uh, it's a generic one, um, so I would be able to return it, but it seems to fit pretty perfectly. And the way it's mounted under here uses this bracket with a couple of screws. So because of the pattern of what's of the frame that's under here, it doesn't match very well with how the hardware of this. So I did have to do some tweaking and uh, drilling out a little bit holes to be a little bit bigger to make it work. But um, depending on your application, this seat does just fine and no complaints from my kids. Back to the seat post. I, because this was my first bike from 14 years ago, I did replace the quick release with one of these and it's not a security one, it's just a simple Allen key, but it makes it so that it's a lot harder for some would-be thief who's just finding an opportunity to pull this out and then just take your seat, okay? So they would have to have an Allen wrench. Is it hard to have an Allen wrench? Obviously not, but I feel it's a lot more secure to have this attached that way versus the seat with the quick release. If I didn't have that lock, I would probably pull the seat out and literally take it with me to the grocery market or wherever it is that I'm going, um, just so I don't have to worry about that. Because the last thing you want um, is not just have to pay for that, but to be able to, to have to ride home with no seat. One important safety device or accessory is gonna be a mirror, okay? I realize this is not the most ideal location. However, I, <laughs> I don't know, it's an aesthetic thing. I don't like that they have goofy ones that kind of hang over like this and it looks like a motorcycle or a moped. I mean, I wanted the, the bike to kind of stay looking like a bike. So I did want to have only one mirror. Um, here in the US, we're riding on the right side. So I didn't generally don't need a mirror on the other side, but I did want to at least have one here. So ideally for viewability, you're going to want it at the bar ends. So they stick out here. Okay. But for me, practical practicality, um, I have a car parked here and a car normally parked here and I bring my bike through in between. So the last thing I want is to increase the width of the bike such that I can't bring the bike out without moving cars. So that's not then something I wanted to do. And again, I didn't like the height of having mirrors come out here looking like little ears. So I do like having it below here. What that means is when I'm mounted on the bike that I do have to zip up any jacket that I have because if the wind is blowing and my jacket's out here, then it's in the way of viewing where this mirror would look. Okay, so this mirror works very well for me. I do have to zip up my jacket <laughs> to use it, um, and it's not gonna be as usable as if it were up here, um, where you don't have to tilt your head down to view what's behind you. Um, or if you're riding and you have bar ends, you can look on that side and it's much easier. So there is, many disadvantages of having this here, but I do prefer to have it down here for those reasons I've stated. Um, for this bike, I haven't added mirrors at all. Um, I generally don't ride this bike nearly as much, and I just feel like the handlebars are just so cluttered with so many things already. I suppose I could put a mirror here and hang it down the bottom like I did the other one. But I'm gonna save, this mirror did come in pairs, so I'm gonna save the other one for uh, the new bike that those accessories are for. Okay, so the cool thing about these sunglasses is that they are photochromic, which means that they turn dark in the sunlight and they turn uh, clear when there's not any sun. And another cool thing is that they are polarized. <laughs> I almost forgot the word. So they are polarized, which means that you're gonna see colors a little bit brighter than if they were not polarized. And um, I do always wear glasses of some sort, whether they're my normal glasses from every day or these, because at certain speeds, um, just the wind getting in my face start to tear up. And I don't know if that's a common thing with you guys, but it is with me. And so I do prefer wearing glasses. And these, I will leave in a link below, not because I'm trying to make a commission, but because they were $1.99, <laughs> literally $1.99 plus tax shipped from China. Okay, so that deal is every now and then, generally they're gonna be like 
five to eight dollars and sometimes maybe 12. Um, generally not 12, like five to seven usually, under 10. Um, but every now and then, 199. So <laughs> can't go wrong with those. All right, the last accessory is going to be the helmet. So the helmet that you have is rated probably rated as a regular bike helmet, which is rated at 20 miles per hour, which happens to be the limit of electric bikes, at least here um, in California. So, and probably most states of the United States, the limit is gonna be 20 miles an hour. But a lot of you are gonna be unlocking your bikes and they're going a little bit faster than 20 miles an hour. And so you may wanna consider getting an e-bike rated helmet, which is NTS 8776, I believe is the rating and that is rated for 28 miles per hour, okay? So your current helmet at 20 miles per hour is only rated up to that limit. You may wanna get a helmet that is rated at uh, higher. And so I'm gonna show you inside the feature, actually on the side I mentioned earlier, this hole here is designed for, oh, by the way, this is the Burn Hudson helmet, okay? It's one of the two helmets that is e-bike rated and has and offers MIPS, okay? So there is only one other helmet on the market right now that offers MIPS and is an e-bike, literally and actually an e-bike helmet, rated at 20 miles per hour um, on the market. There are a lot of e-bikes, a lot of helmet manufacturers that are saying that their helmets are for e-bikes and basically that means it has a headlight and has like a light in the back, um, but they're not actually rated um, and tested for 28 miles per hour. So this is the one of two. The other one is made by a company called Laser. And that I found was pretty cool because if I remember correctly, it has these goggles that are built in that if you're not using them, they're attached by magnet and you can flip it upside down and it mounts to your forehead here. So that I found a cool feature because you don't have to wear glasses and it's kind of built into the helmet. Um, but I decided to go with this because of the feature of the hole here and because um, I've had good luck with burn helmets and also like the visor that's built in. And that's it. So here's the MIPS. So for those of you who don't know, it's technology. That basically means there's a yellow lining of plastic inside, <laughs> which believe it or not is a licensed thing. So companies who are selling helmets, who are advertising um, that they have MIPS, is gonna to have to pay the company who invented this technology. And the idea without getting too technical about it is that when there's an impact, um, you, you do want your head to rotate slightly um, so that it creates, I guess, less of a chance of your any sort of neck injury. Um, and so by having MIPS, it creates a surface that can slide around. And so it's, it sounds a lot more fancy by having a name and by having um, it as a feature um, than it really is. <laughs> um, but apparently tests have shown that it has improved um, people's condition and being safer um, when there's a collision. So um, if, you, if there's a chance and you have an opportunity to get a helmet with MIPS and it doesn't cost too much more than without, then I would suggest that you get one that does. And so that is the Burn Hudson helmet. So oh, one more reason I got this is because it has the dial. Okay, so it's like a perfect snug fit using the dial. Some of these don't have dials. Um, so I just find that harder to find the perfect fit. And if you're sharing a helmet with someone else, it helps to be able to adjust this on the fly. The helmet also offers a light back here. I don't have it with me, but it's rechargeable by micro USB and you can remove it and put it on. It is not that bright. Okay, so in the daytime, you're not gonna see it that well. It's more of a nighttime visual thing, but even then it's just an added feature. I wouldn't get it because of that. Although I did thinking it may be a little bit brighter and a little bit nicer quality of light, but it actually really isn't. But overall the helmet itself is a good buy at about 100 to 130, I believe, or maybe 150, depending on the season you get it and the store that you got it at. Another cool gadget I found is this headlight. And so I would prefer and I would recommend if you can and if it's not too inconvenient for you to find a headlight, this is a stock one, but to find a headlight that's integrated into the system of the bike 
where um, your screen or controller can turn on and off the headlight. But if you do not have that option or you're not looking to necessarily do that, then as an aftermarket part, I do recommend a headlight like this. And the reason why it's good is because of it's a fairly wide size and it does have different options for being super bright, uh, less bright, actually brighter, and then um, blinking. And the cool thing about this is that it can slide off easily from their propriety amount. And the back is also, this port here is for not only charging this light, but this is also an output. So you can use this as a battery bank. So this can be used as a battery bank to charge your phone or charge whatever gadgets you have. And it is a light. So it's pretty neat. Um, and the fact that it slides off this, um, adapter here it makes it so that if you're worried about it you can easily remove it and then put it in your bag and so you're not attracting thieves to take all your stuff they do offer this light in a version that doesn't have the battery pack that has the output and therefore you cannot charge your phone and it's just strictly a light for that one it's cheaper but for this particular one it was 16 dollars from aliexpress earlier i said i do not recommend a hand pump and to get the electric one the only reason I have this is because it's borrowed from another bike that I had from 14 years ago. <laughs> Actually, more than 14 years ago. So I figured, since I'm riding this one, why not at least have this? And I recently got, I only recently got the electric one, electric pump. So um, in the meantime, I'd use this, and since I already have the bracket, and rather than leaving it to waste, um, I put on the bike here. And this is made by a company called Lazine, which is a lot more expensive than it should be back in the day. Um, we didn't really have access to AliExpress and there weren't that many generic ones, but this is a very generic design, which you can get now. I got this for like, I think $35 for this hand pump because of the cool look and just it comes with this mounting bracket that makes it all really clean. And then the mounting bracket is actually integrated with the water bottle bosses or mounting brackets. And so it just, it's very clean mounting system. Um, but you can buy this nowadays from AliExpress for $8, $8. So if for some reason you wanted that or as a backup, or you don't feel like getting an electric bike pump because you feel the extra weight and, you know, lugging around something that you most likely won't need and you still want to have, um, the safety or usability of a pump, um, you can get this from AliExpress for about eight bucks. Okay, so that is it as far as accessories. I know the video is probably pretty long. Hopefully you found that there are buttons below in the description that you can kind of navigate through and skip along to find the parts that you need. If you need to go back in the video, um, you feel free to use those buttons to get back to where you need to go without having to navigate through the whole video because I know that can be annoying. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And that is it, All right? Ride safe, bye.